I'm now in the Flex booth with Greg, K5GJ, and you're with Flex. Yep. And you're the... I'm the Vice President of Sales and Marketing. I think that in the, oh. a dollar will get me a cup of coffee or something. <laughs> yeah. I'm the sales guy who what does that stuff. We're basically all technical engineers okay. and somebody had to be the sales guy. Okay. <laughs> Well, at Dayton, you introduced a very new radio with a very yes. new concept. Right. And as, as we were chatting before we started recording here, I've got just all, all sorts of different radios, never had a flex, but I follow a lot of the different mailing lists, the K3s, the 990, the 7800, and all these things. And a lot of people are talking on a lot of those mailing lists that the new 6000 series is the game changer, the thing to watch. Right. Why it, is that? Well. It's a, it, it's a direct digital down conversion, direct digital up conversion radio. And um, so um, basically the way that works is the Flex 6000 series has a new, a new paradigm, if you will, called a spectral capture unit that uses direct digital conversion and downloads the entire uh, HF spectrum in one swallow. And then what we do is we've introduced the concept of receiver slices. In the case of the 6700 here that I've got on, on a pedestal, you can actually have up to eight receiver slices, each with 384 kilohertz wide. So imagine eight 384 kilohertz wide receivers in one box. On the same band? On, on the same band, on other bands. You oh. could be literally working somebody on 20 meters, watching two different six meter beacons to come open. You could be listening to your AM broadcast band and on the case of the 6700, it goes up through VHF. So you're watching to see if two meter sideband has come open. All in the same radio. So it goes up to two meters directly? On the, on the 6700, the receiver works through two meters and the transmitter at low power. Yes. Okay. So that's, that'd be great if there was a big D expedition with 10 stations on the air, you could be listening to every one of them and watch them come up and down. Absolutely, them, right? absolutely. Oh, wow. Not only that, because of the, it's ethernet based, okay. so the radio is really designed around networking. So if you have a 6700 <laughs> or a 6500 at your shack, uh -huh. and I've got one here, there's a very good likelihood that we could share receivers for fun and exciting wow. things, yes. Now that's some that's some future software, but that's the hardware is designed to be able to do that today. So that's, it's imagine it as a radio server, is a really good way to describe that. So in the past, the radios have relied on the computer a lot to do the demodulation and modulation work by feeding the audio as the IQ. Right. Is that now moved into the radio box? We moved it back into the radio. Okay. And the, there's a bunch of reasons, but most of it has to do with, with real high performance processing. You need the ability to be able to get to the data in a very fast turn okay. and not have to have latency. So actually, um, the, the processing power in this thing is, you know, if you're into gigamax and megaflops, it's 317 gigaflops. Okay. We're talking about Cray kind of performance. This is, yeah, this go is, fast stuff. Go fast stuff, yes. And we moved all that inside and then embedded, embedded all the heavy lifting of software-defined radio into the radio itself. Okay. It's very much software. Okay. And it's very much running in the radio, and that means you can download it, you can upgrade it, you can do it. But we've put the processing power as close to the RF as possible. So now all that's under your control, and that's split between what was in the box before and, and Windows, Windows and absolutely, and yeah. All that. It also leads the, for the promise to be able to use other clients. This is a very thin client architecture, okay. meaning the radio is a server, your PC or your other device, you know, when we when we launch in, in Q4, it will be on Windows platform. Okay. But there's no reason why it can't be on other things now. Sure. There there were some severe limitations uh, with Power SDR and the fact that it's so integrated. Yeah. It's a great program and it's used by virtually every software defined radio yes. people out there as the basis. Yeah. And and we we're, we're going to continue to develop and work with Power SDR. But on the new radio. It's, it's a split, and we call it Smart SDR because it's the combination of the hardware, the firmware in the radio, and the client package. Okay, so the 5,000, 3,000, 1,500 will still be supported, maintained? Absolutely, upgrades, yes, upgrades. yes. And that will be free software, open source community, just like we've always had. Uh -huh. Hey, that, that whole concept of open source software started Software Defined Radio in the ham space, yeah. and we're very proud of that heritage, and we want to continue supporting it. Okay. Well, so. very good. Thank you. <laughs> All right. and, uh, oh, a couple other questions everybody sure. probably wants to know. 
When and how much? Okay, when. So, we are, we have every intention of, of starting production in Q4 of this year. Uh, I've been joking about whether or not that's October 1st or December 32nd. But well, usually but from Q a manufacturing point of view, it's the last day. The right. Customers' expectations are it's the, the first, first day. day. Correct. But we've actually we've got a pre-order project going right now with our. Um, our early adopters, if you will, okay. uh, the response has just been overwhelming. Hmm. Um, we actually have had taken so many pre-orders, we're about to say, okay, we need to stop yeah. until we can get stuff out into production. Right. That's how exciting it's been. So those guys are really expecting, you know, they'll be our right there on the bleeding, leading edge, mm -hmm. and it's going to be great. Um, how much is a good much? question. Yes. In the case of the 6500, which is the one spectral capture unit, four receiver slices, that's $39.99, that's $3,999. Okay. About the cost of a very good high performance radio. Sure. In the case of the 6700, okay. which adds a complete second spectral capture yep. unit, all the filtering, right. all the capture, right. and yeah, a right. much, much larger processing engine, okay. which is a combination of FPGA and VHF, it's $69.99. Okay. So for 4000 you can get in pretty easily, and then you don't need to have a high performance specialized right. computer, probably right. what you have. Whatever you have uh, working should be no okay. problem. Yeah. So that'll probably make it much easier for your support people now. Yes, and, and being Ethernet, there's no drivers for you to worry right. about loading. You physical le level, and you don't have to worry absolutely. about USB serial drivers. Yes, and all, this all other that sort of melts into the background. So That's absolutely right. Ethernet's Avoidance. Yeah, well, so good. Do, do things, yeah. Well, thanks. We're very excited about it. Okay. All right. Well, I'll see you in Pacific on most likely. Oh, yes, absolutely. Okay. We'll be there. All okay. right. Thanks, Randy. Thanks Appreciate it. Okay. All right. We'll see you. I'm here with Dennis, K7BB from Yesu. And the last we talked was at Pacific Con. Yes. Of course, now it's post date. And I know you had two big introductions there. A we new did. HF radio and we a new did. digital HD. Why don't yeah. you fill us in? It was pretty exciting. We had seven engineers come over uh, with us, and they brought with a radio that we really didn't know was coming. It was called the FTDX 3000. 3000, yeah. And we're very excited about it because it's going to be a nice, properly priced radio for a lot of people because it's going to be have a street price of about $3,000. Okay. But what they did is they took the uh, FTDX 5000 which has been an extremely popular radio because it's got the best performance numbers uh, okay. today in the market as, yeah. as confirmed by Rob Sherwood. Mm. And they took that main receiver out of there and they put it into the FTDX 3000. And in doing that, uh, without bringing the second receiver in and, and dropping the, the power from 200 watts to 100 watts, and taking the power supplier out, they were able to make that an affordable radio for a lot more people okay. to get that kind of receiver performance. Sure. Cool. And it's got an IF out, which everybody wants these days right. so they can have a nice band scope. Well, it's got the band scope built in too, right? It does have a band scope built in. Uh, it'll be a, a brand new uh, innovation for people to see a Yesu radio that's actually got a TFT display on it. It's got an S meter. You can see the controls as you're setting for uh, the contour and, and the various uh, QRM fighting tools, as well as it's got a small band scope on it. So this is a real innovation for Yesu. Yeah, the band scopes come back. make it really interesting to watch what's Indeed. going on when you're working like a DX and you're working split. Even though you may not have a second receiver, you can yes. see where all the pile up is going on. Yeah. And they all call. Yeah. And then he answers one, and you see one spike go up, and that's where you tune in. You yeah. You can't hear. You can see what's going on. What we did with this radio as well as uh, some of the other ones is even though we've only got one one VFO that you can listen to at a time, yeah. we've got right next to the VFO button a TXW button and when you push that you can hear the other VFO. Yeah. So with the band scope you can find out what's going on as far as that split and then you can go to the other VFO, set it up there and you can just, by pushing it, you can see what's going on on that frequency. And it, it, yeah. anyway, it's a very usable radio still for working de-expeditions. So, the two questions with a new radio. Yes. How much and what? Well, how you much? Answered how much? It's 3, a, about 3,000. <laughs> and they're telling us for sure it'll be a, a Christmas radio, but we're thinking around October or November. I can see the Christmas ads. Oh, yeah. Santa oh, Claus with yeah. that in the back of the sleigh. I expect I this to be a common with several of the manufacturers. Yeah. It seems like there's fall deliveries coming out here. You know, after last year, which was, uh, you know, just a barren, hardly any new radios, this year ought to be really exciting around Christmas. Yeah. Yeah, it's really 
kind of a sad experience to go to a big show with nothing. Though. Yeah. That's yeah. I've been that with the broadcast world. It's like same hardware, new software. You know, it's, yeah, I've only been with Yesu uh, six years, but um, I, I asked some of the old timers, I said, can you remember going to Dayton without a, a new radio? And last year, you know, was one of the first that anybody okay. could remember. So, yeah. uh, you know, part of this is probably because we've, we've now separated from Motorola and we are going back to the original name 50-some years ago of Yesu Musen. Yes. Which in Musen is the Japanese word meaning like wireless or like radio. Okay. So we've gone back to that. We have a new logo, and uh, okay. uh, and we've gone back to to the name uh, Yeshu Musen. But I really like it. I'm excited about it because it means the possibility of ham radio, unique radios. Sure. When when we were uh, uh, the Vertex Standard Company, we, we had a big interest in land mobile, marine, aviation and amateur radio and now with land mobile gone to motorola it's it's marine aviation and amateur which are, are more compatible with with some of the designs and i think we'll see yesu going back to making some of those unique satellite radios and uh, yeah. for uh, and, and that sort of thing yes. i had one of those for years yeah i mean yeah. I, I don't have a promise of when it's coming <laughs> but i know the development team now has has, the main business for us today is amateur radio again, so that Very means good. we're a top priority. Very good. Yeah. So, the new digital HT. The new digital. That. Yeah, we introduced the uh, FTD1DR, and this radio is a C4FM uh, FDMA uh, radio, which is a, 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 a mode a digital radio that's that's quite popular over in the commercial side. Uh, we wanted to come in with this radio because it, it uses 12.5 megahertz and that will allow us to do a, move a lot of data and move it fast. 12.5 kilohertz? Kilohertz, excuse kilohertz. me. Kilohertz, kilohertz yes. And bandwidth, yeah. Yes, no bandwidth. And now, bandwidth <laughs> excuse me. And, <laughs> oh, thanks for correcting me on that one. Uh, you get the email. <laughs> <laughs> Save me from looking like a dummy too bad. But uh, that, that radio is going to be, uh, we, we chose to go with that where a lot of people thought maybe we were going to come in with a narrow band radio. But we went with that because we want, you know, if you're going to have digital, you might as well take advantage of the full benefits, which is to move a lot of digital or video. Interestingly, this uh, there's a, a mic option with this, and guess what's on the end of that mic? A camera. Oh. So it is it, it, huh? no. It's it's quite interesting. You know, people are wondering, well, you know, what do I do with this thing? It, it is a digital and analog thing. Uh, of course, it needs a repeater. Now, Motorola makes a repeater today, but we'll be introducing our own repeater and our own mobile version of this radio within this year. So we want to get this handheld out, get everybody's comments on it. And there's some talk that there may be another kind of uh, uh, of a handheld that 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 is uh, that might be compatible with some of the other uh, digital modes. Certainly not D-Star, but some of the other ones that are out there. More, more to re be revealed. So I'm sure all your customers and users are giving you lots of input on the new radio. Oh, we're getting <laughs> lots of input. <laughs> the DMR guys, the uh, Moto Turbo fellows, yeah, they provided lots of input. Uh, you know, again, Japan flew in seven engineers to hear this stuff uh, at Dayton, so I'm sure they went home with, with plenty of uh, ideas and lots of good input. Very good. All right, well, thanks a lot. All right, and, uh, we'll good to see, see you, you Randy. Pacific, huh? I'll be down there again. All righty. So. Thank you, Randy. Appreciate it. Okay. Thank bye you, bye. sir. Bye-bye. Off to somewhere else. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. We'll just pause for a second here while we wait for the PA. Giving away a new prize, which I'm probably not there to get. <laughs> I thought we had the fix in. I thought oh, the, fix. the fix. Yeah, so that you'd win one this time.